Greetings family, this is Brother Eli with another episode of Bible Truth Revealed. Today I will be exploring the subject, What did Christ redeem us from? What did Christ redeem us from? Let us start by turning to the book of Galatians chapter 3. The letter to the Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Notice this does not say Christ has redeemed us from the law, but rather Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the focus is the curse and not the law. However, in order to identify which curse is being referenced, we need to know which law is being referred to. If Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, the question is the curse of which law? Identify the law Find the curse that's attached to it, and that is what is being referred to when it says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. If we go up to verse 10, it actually tells us which law. Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 reads thus, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So my prayer is that by the end of this study, there'll be a very clear answer to the question, What did Christ redeem us from? For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. Which curse? For it is written. Whenever we read it is written, it is incumbent upon us to find where it is written in order to study as close to the original as possible and get a better understanding of what is being spoken about. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So those who are of the works of the law are under a specific curse. Because it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Which law is it referring to? It is referring to the Torah, the book of the law. There was a book in which Moses wrote the law which was given to the children of Israel. And verse 10 says that everybody that does not continue to do the things which are written in that book is under a curse. But verse 13 tells us that Christ has redeemed us from that curse. Let us go to where it is written in order to get a better understanding. The subject might seem a little bit confusing on the surface, but when we go to where it is written and get a better understanding, it becomes clearer. Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26. 
Now I will be reading that from the Septuagint. The Septuagint is uh, the Bible that was translated from the original Hebrew. Going back to the year 250 BC into the Greek language. This was done by the Israelites. So from Hebrew to Greek by the people of God. It is the oldest and most reliable collection of scripture that I could get my hands on. And that's the reason I use the Septuagint. In the Septuagint, Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26 says this. Cursed is every man that continues not in all the words of the law to do them. And all the people shall say, so be it. Otherwise known as, Amen. So, Galatians chapter 3 verse 10 is quoting directly from Deuteronomy chapter 27 verse 26. Those people who do not do those things that are written in the book of the law are under a curse. Now, if we go up to the first verse of Deuteronomy chapter 27, it gives us even more context. It says, And Moses and the elders of Israel commanded, saying, Keep all these commands, all that I command you this day, and it shall come to pass in the day when ye shall cross over Jordan into the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, that thou shalt set up for thyself great stones, and shall plaster them with plaster, verse 3, and thou shalt write on these stones all the words of this law, that is the Torah, as soon as ye have crossed Jordan, when ye are entered into the land which the Lord God of thy fathers gives thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, according as the Lord God of thy fathers said to thee. So the Torah, the law of God, was to be written on these stones when they crossed the Jordan. If we go down now to verse 10, a bit more context leading up to verse 26, it says, And thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and shalt do all his commands and his ordinances, as many as I command thee this day. In other words, keep the commandments of the Most High God. Verse 11, And Moses charged the people on that day, saying, these shall stand to bless the people on Mount Garrison, having gone over Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judas, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. 13. And these shall stand for cursing on Mount Gebal, Reuben, Gad, and Asher, Zabulon, Dan, and Naphtali. Notice that these are the twelve tribes of Israel. These are the people that Moses led from the land of Egypt. These are the people to whom the scriptures were written. And these people are told that a set of you are going to stand to bless. And another set of you are going to stand to curse. The understanding is that if the Israelites kept the commandments of God, they will receive the blessings. But if the Israelites do not keep God's commandment, the curses will be poured out upon them. I'll read a few verses down so we can see examples of some of these curses that will be poured out upon the Israelites if they did not keep God's commandments, if they did not do everything that is written in the book of the law. Verse 14, And the Levites shall answer and say to all Israel with a loud voice, Cursed is the man whosoever shall make a graven or molten image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of craftsmen, and shall put it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, So be it. So, so be it, or Amen, is agreement to what has just been said. So the children of Israel are saying, Yes, if any man creates a graven or molten image, 
to worship it, which is idolatry, the curse will be poured out upon him. Verse 16. Cursed is the man that dishonors his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, so be it. And that continues curse after curse after curse. So if we read, for example, in verse 17, it says, Cursed is he that removes his neighbor's landmarks, and all the people shall say, so be it. The children of Israel are pronouncing a curse upon themselves if they break God's commandments. If you keep reading right down to the very end, I'll go down to verse 20. Three and continue to the end, it says, Cursed is he that lies with his daughter-in-law, and all the people shall say, So be it, because these things are sin. Breaking the commandments of God is a sin. And when we break God's commandments, the curse is poured out upon us. Cursed is he that lies with his wife's sister, and all the people shall say, So be it. Verse 24, Cursed is he that smites his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, So be it. Cursed is he, whosoever shall have taken a bribe to slay an innocent man, and all the people shall say, So be it. So this is the context in which it was written. As we read in verse 26, Cursed is every man that continues not in all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, so be it. In other words, the book of the law was given to the people of God. These laws were written down so the people would know exactly what God required. And the people understood that if they kept God's law, they would be blessed above all nations. Because the Israelites were and still are God's chosen people. However, on the flip side, if they did not keep God's law, the curse would be poured out upon them. And the term the curse is referring to all these curses that we've just read. And if you turn to the next chapter, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, verse 15 says this, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe all his commandments, as many as I charge thee this day, then all these curses shall come on thee and overtake thee. And from that verse, right down to verse 68, are specific curses that would come on the children of Israel if we do not keep God's commandments. Verse 25 says, The Lord give thee up for slaughter before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out against them one way and flee from their face seven ways. And thou shalt be a dispersion in all the kingdoms of the earth. Did that not happen to the Israelites, the so-called black man and black woman, who were taken into slavery on ships? Did they not get scattered across the world by their enemies, by another nation? Did this not happen throughout the history of these same people? We have the Arab slave trade, Babylonian slavery, Persians, the Greeks. If you can name a nation, they've enslaved the people of God. These curses follow the Israelites wherever they go unless they keep God's commandments. Because that was a covenant that God made with the children of Israel. Verse 26 says, And your dead men shall be food to the birds of the sky and to the beasts of the earth, and there shall be none to scare them away. When our men were being lynched, and the birds were coming and pecking out their eyes and ripping away their skin, nobody was scaring them away. When all men were being shot down and ripped to pieces 
and their bodies were left for the dogs to eat, nobody was scaring them away. The curses make it clear who the children of Israel are, the so-called black man and black woman who are descendants of the slave trade. We are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Another example is verse 30. Bear in mind every single curse here applies to the Israelites, even today. Verse 30 says, Thou shalt take a wife, and another man shall have her. During slavery, if a black slave, which is what they were, black slaves, wanted to take a wife, the slave master needed to break her in first, just to remind him who's really in charge around here. And whenever it took the slave master's fancy, he could come around and knock on the door and say, I'm here to have your wife, which is really my wife. And if you thought you were bad, you would open your mouth and get shot in the face. This is what the Bible is speaking of. That is a curse that has followed the children of Israel. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell in it. Think of the White House. Think of all the great houses around the world, the mansions that have been built by slave labor, but slaves have not lived in them. These are the curses that have followed the children of Israel. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and shalt not gather the grapes of it. All the sugar cane, the cotton, all these things that all people have planted and we've not benefited from them, that is one of the curses on the children of Israel. I will give one more precept, but again, the entire chapter speaks of the curses against the children of Israel from verse 15 to the very end. Verse 41 says, Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, and they shall not be thine, for they shall depart into captivity. When the enemies of God got on their slave ships and traveled over to West Africa and packed our children on those ships and scattered them across the world, this was being fulfilled. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, and they shall not be thine, for they shall depart into captivity. The curses make it very clear who is being referred to, and we are told that if we do not keep God's commandments, the curses would continue to follow us. So let's go back now to Galatians chapter 3. I will read verse 10 and verse 13 again, and we'll answer the question, what did Christ redeem us from? Verse 10 of Galatians chapter 3. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. We now know which law it's referring to. It's the Torah, the law that God gave to Moses for the children of Israel. We now know what curse it's referring to. All the curses that are present even today on the children of Israel. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So the answer to the question, what did Christ redeem us from, is this. Jesus Christ did not redeem us from anything because he never existed. He was invented by the pagans who wrote the New Testament in order to lead the children of Israel into idolatry. Just look around, my friend. Jesus Christ did not redeem the children of Israel from the curses that are attached to the law, because this day the children of Israel continue to break God's law and continue to be under those curses. It's time for the children of Israel to wake up to the fact that we have been deceived. We need to return to the Most High God and leave the idolatry of Christianity. And with that, I say, Shalom.